Nothing causes me to skew more strongly toward my more libertarian leanings than an errant mention of our languid legal system. Our criminal justice system has become a lumbering monolithic ham beast, gorging itself on the blood of the guilty and innocent alike, unencumbered by electoral oversight, generations removed from consequences of any description that exists solely for the parsimonious purpose of unerringly perpetuating itself. And no single case is more exemplary of this fact than the ludicrous misdemeanor conviction of my home county's five-time fucking sheriff, Joe Arpaio. Everyone knows the propaganda by heart. The Democratic Party's court jester John Stewart made well fucking sure of that over the procession of propaganda he construed as a comedy show. Racist, demagogue, racial profiler, the archduke of illegal detainments, 15 kilotons of bull fucking shit. Yet here Arpaio sits, slave to the wiles of an increasingly activist court system that's long since exchanged interpretation of the law for amending the fucking thing. Christ, if only there were some like-minded renegade executive figure largely removed from the waning Washington establishment who could somehow ameliorate the retardation. President Trump has pardoned Joe Arpaio, the former sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona, was convicted of criminal contempt for what was described as a racial profiling. House Speaker Paul Ryan said he does not agree with this decision. Arizona Senator John McCain said it undermines Mr. Trump's claim for the respect of the rule of law. Sheriff Joe was very unfairly treated by the Obama administration, especially right before an election, an election that he would have won. So, and he was elected many times. So um, I stand by my pardon of Sheriff Joe. And I think the people of Arizona who really know him best would agree with me. Before I put a halt to this horse shit, you have to understand the history. I apologize in advance for how condensed this is, and the fact that many of the articles alluding to some of these events were never really cataloged online due to taking place in the 80s, 90s, or even 2000s. So while I will be using sources here, I'm understandably not going to have access to all of them. I ain't gonna bother with the dollop of dick jokes here either, because this shit needs to be heard, unencumbered. It's a common misconception, even among conservatives, that the now exposedly corrupt Obama Justice Department was anti-Arpaio merely as a retaliatory measure for the lawman making it personal via the birth certificate investigation. Not fucking factual. In actuality, Obama's DOJ had it out for Arpaio from the outset. To fully grasp Obama's bugaboo with Sheriff Joe, you have to go back to the year 2004. Illegal immigration in my home state of Arizona was approaching its boiling point. Every other day, it seemed, a guest worker was implicated in some roadside motor vehicle conflagration, absent insurance, thus perma-fucking illegal goddamn resident with a lifetime of astronomical insurance rates, gang shootings, kidnappings, or otherwise. Organizations like the Center for Immigration Studies have an exhaustive catalog of such incidents, and I recommend the skeptical among you avail yourself of it. The long and short of it, Thanks to Ted Kennedy's Immigration Act of the 60s, Phoenix suburbs had slowly gone from picket fences and immaculate lawns to Tijuana too. Not everywhere, mind you, but despite extensive gentrification efforts and millions of dollars poured into a fucking folly trolley system, money well spent, dipshits, wander haplessly in the wrong neighborhood and say, Guadalupe, Buckeye, or South Phoenix, you'd be lucky to find a single street with an English speaker, much less five fucking legal residents. While I'm eminently satisfied with my wall video, particularly its focus on the Mexican side of the immigration debate, one area I felt I somewhat neglected was the adverse effects on the U.S. side. Sure, I told the crazy lady story and how it was a microcosm of how my childhood stomping grounds were annihilated by unchecked illegal immigration, but now I'm gonna make it your problem. I think it was J.R.R. Tolkien who once said, the broadest truths are best relayed through painstaking specifics. So instead of backing the fuck off for the establishing porno shot, let's zoom way the fuck into the brown eye of the needle man's hairy sweaty ass shot, and let's talk about just one. One minuscule aspect to illustrate how many millions we lose to untrammeled illegal immigration. I told you in the wall video just how bad South Phoenix is in places. There are entire neighborhoods without any English billboards or businesses in sight. The transformation was slow, but it was profound. And right in the heart of it all is a piddly ass school district called the Murphy School District. Just four elementary schools right in the heart of South Phoenix. But I'm not even gonna focus on a district. Too big. Not even a single school, in fact. Again, too big. I want laser focus here. Just one program in one school. Food. 
No doubt you've heard of the free or reduced lunch program. The idea being that for low-income students or those in challenging domestic situations, of which in South Phoenix the vast majority of the children of Mexican immigrants, and thus very much are, we cut the kid a break on lunch. They get it for fucking free. Understandable. No kid should starve after all. When one enrolls in said program, they, I believe, have to fill out paperwork for it. A simple pay stub or the like, indicating either lack of employment or reduced income. That's all that's required, if fucking that. Well, at one particular school in this district, the principal began to realize that with the changing demographics in the 1980s and 90s, it was actually easier and possibly in the future somewhat cheaper, though we're somewhat hazy on that fact. Rather than keeping track of the miserably few children whose families could actually afford a fucking meal to give blanket free lunch to everyone in the goddamn school, and this policy enacted in the 90s remains in place to this very day and has since spread to the rest of the goddamn district. It's not an exaggeration to say we've paid millions of dollars to feed one district alone, almost entirely due to the economic duress associated with elevated levels of illegal immigration in that neighborhood. And that's just one goddamn district. That's how bad it was and is. Laws like SB 1070, the law Arpaio was brought to court for daring to enforce, were a direct reaction to the adverse effect of illegal immigration in this state. But people like myself, who had seen the devastating effects on Mexico as well, again, which you can see in my Why We Need the Wall video, we understood the problem was even graver still. What the bought out bitches on CNN conveniently omit from their skewed as fuck fable is that SB 1070 was actually merely the ghost of a previous bill. Around 2004, a local lawmaker named Russell Pierce, whose recall and removal from office was frankly the dress rehearsal for what ultimately happened to Arpaio, and you should absolutely look it up, posited a solution, Proposition 200, the Protect Arizona Now initiative, PAN 2004 for short. The concept was simple, any and all government benefits and services, barring emergency medical care and other necessities, obviously, would be flatly refused to non-citizens. No welfare, no complimentary transportation, no fucking library card. It was a law that essentially stipulated that government employees, police, etc., must carry out the job they were already legally ordained to do, but for myriad reasons, many of them political, had since become lax in enforcing, thus creating an incentive for illegal immigration. The law passed in a landslide. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, far and away the most left-wing court in all the land, sadly also the largest, based as we all know, in the sunny state of California, proceeded to squat over our very red state and pinch a log in our electoral mouths, much as they had done previously in their home state when, believe it or not, California actually passed similar measures, Props 182 and 187 also by large margins, and several million Californians, many of them liberal, had their will overturned in an instant by a coterie of unelected cunts. Democracy. SB 1070 was literally a retaliatory fuck you fresh from the voters of my home state to rewrite the law in such painstakingly specific language so as to provide the pissants on the Pelosi payroll with no extant opportunity to muck it the fuck up. That the ACLU subsequently complained about the quote vagueness of said law is flatly goddamn hilarious. It was not only not vague as effectively a legislative rebuttal, it was almost pedantically specific. Try reading the goddamn thing sometime. And you want to hear something else you won't see moping across the Chiron on the Clinton News Network? Pan 2004? The law that started all this shit? Yeah, Arpaio, the racist, demagogue, and reputed Mexican hater? He didn't fucking support it! At the time, he was shacking the fuck up with a lesbianic woman, Janet Napolitano, who at that time was governor. They issued a joint statement across party lines, along with prominent rhinos like John McCain, defaming the law as impractical and a needless drain on public resources. Now, how it would drain resources by refusing millions of non-citizens those very same resources? Well, the fuck beyond me, but hey, that's establishment politics. So why would a bitch who was busted on embezzlement carry out an anti-Arpaio vendetta once she ascended to the Obama cabinet in 08? Well, because Arpaio, after seeing how well the law actually worked, broke with Napolitano and McCain, openly endorsing it thereafter, and sat the fuck up to support its successor. Yeah, no cause for a long-term political vendetta there. Particularly as he began deporting Napolitano's voters by the busload. Straight the fuck up. 
the woman never forgot it. And Obama's immediate move to investigate Arpaio, having never once expressed disdain for the man or his policies previously, lends further credence to this admitted but credible theory. You know the rest, folks. SB 1070 passed by an even wider margin, I believe, than its predecessor, no less. It also worked, dropping the rate of illegal immigration in this state by between 30 to 70 percent at a time when Texas, New Mexico, and California were being flat out fucking overrun, according to a 2016 study in the Arizona Economic Journal. And oh, hey, by the way, the Supreme Court fucking upheld it. So, uh, George Arpaio, of course, was the sheriff of Maricopa County, and at that point, uh, a judge had ordered him to stop uh, going and investigating people based on whether they were undocumented immigrants. Why? Well, number one, it's because that's a federal offense and uh, and has nothing to do with his job as a sheriff in Maricopa County. Conflicting reports on the Supreme Court's ruling on Arizona's controversial SB 1070 immigrant law. The most controversial piece of legislation that was upheld is the show me your papers provision, which allows police to question anyone suspected to be an undocumented immigrant and demand to see their papers. It's bullshit! It's bullshit! Take your bothered, you're low on energy. Okay, let's get time for a bacon grease break. I don't eat bacon grease. Mm, okay, come on, come on, get your bacon grease. No, I don't eat, okay, maybe a little bacon grease. Get your bacon grease. All right, okay. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, num num uh, bacon uh, grease. Yes. Uh, Meeting when Arpaio was singled out by shitbag Bush appointee Judge G. Marie Snow for continuing to enforce it, it was actually the judge, not Arpaio, who was in direct violation of federal law. The public perception around the Arpaio case was that mean old asshole Arpaio finally got his comeuppance from the put-upon citizenry after being exposed as corrupt. The reality, this motherfucker was elected five fucking times, including twice under Obama and at least once long after the investigation was launched and turned up fucking nothing. No one here gave a flying fuck about Obama's DOJ dicking around with our sheriff's office when he trounced the living shit out of Paul Penzone in 2012, which makes the fact that 2016 showed an almost complete inversion of that very same result without anything at all fucking changing and very little demographic shift? All the more curious. I'd point to the fact that there was some serious fuckery afoot with polling firms in the state of Arizona during the 2016 election. Polls had Ted Cruz ahead of Trump by as much as seven points in the primaries? Trump teabagged his ass. Polls had Clinton ahead by 12 points. We all know what happened there. In fact, there was virtually not a single statewide race in 2016 where the polls were bang the fuck on, except Arpaio? The only race in the state where Soros spent upwards of $4 million and threw his entire organizational mic behind to the same guy who lost and lost badly to him four fucking years ago? Where's a kawinky of a goddamn dink? Trump, if you're sincere in your desire to investigate electoral fraud, bud, start in the Sonoran Desert. It might very well give us a different fucking sheriff. And the ACLU busted out the big guns. Wrongful detainment, racial profiling, unlawful search and seizure. Sounds bad, huh? The Obama DOJ delighted in reprinting it in a now infamous memo that MSNBC quoted like cocksucking scripture. The problem? They never actually proved any of it. At the end of the day, for all their bluster, after seven years and millions of taxpayer dollars, after refusing him a trial by jury, despite being tried by a judge whose wife expressed public contempt for Joe Arpaio, despite that same judge refusing to recuse himself for such, they nailed Sheriff Joe on a misdemeanor. Having been accompanied by a government minder at your expense, mind you, for half a goddamn decade. Criminal? Bitch, he didn't even qualify for fucking jail time. But why, I hear you ask, if they had all this ammo, would they settle for a weak-ass misdemeanor? Answer, the evidence was so waifishly, flockhart fucking thin, it was not only unfit for a jury, but ultimately failed to persuade even a bought-out bitch in a black robe whose wife expressed public support for Arpaio's removal. The ACLU couldn't even get a sympathetic audience while acting preaching to the choir so they motherfuck them with a misdemeanor. Why even bother? Well, before I answer your amorphous query, how about you answer mine? Who's the sheriff of Maricopa County now? Different sheriff, different vocabulary. For 24 years, Sheriff Joe Arpaio made no bones about it. Illegal is illegal. The new sheriff uses different terms for undocumented immigrants. He calls them guests and says he'll focus on those who committed other crimes. So we really need to work with the guests who are here in our, in our nation um, and separate that from those who are committing crimes. Bottom 
bottom line, it was an election year. They knew they possessed not a goddamn thing on him, despite funneling fuckloads of your dollars away in the endeavor, and they desperately needed Arpaio to look dirty in order to compliment the unremitting he's costing us millions narrative shoved out of the shrill boxes of the cunt flaps in our local media for Arpaio to stand a chance of losing to a weak-ass Democratic candidate he'd already butt-fucking beaten. And most galling of all, it actually fucking worked. I mean, if it was ever really about Arpaio's advanced age or costing us tax dollars, there was another alternative, Dan Sabin, who had already run against him a half dozen goddamn times and who had possessed far more law enforcement experience than Paul fucking Penzone. Ah, but Dan Sabin wasn't handpicked by George Soros beginning to come into focus for you now? And incidentally, if it's really about protecting the taxpayers' pocketbooks, it's curious tactics for Penzone to then immediately drop the Sheriff Department's appeal, an injunction which would have saved the state an estimated 40 to 60 million dollars. Just FYI, all the money Arpaio reputedly cost us in his defense from wrongful investigation lawsuits totals up to 10 million less than that. Well done, Arizona. Well fucking done. And before anyone spams the shit out of the 31 flavors of flagrant bullshit articles asserting everything from Arpaio allowing prisoners to perish beneath his care to arguing that he does in fact possess a moon laser with which to hold all of humanity at ass ram and ransom, understand that the vast majority of said stories originally emanate from a local tabloid called the Phoenix New Times. Despite being name checked nationally by hatless liberals who thrilled to its sensationalist anti-Arpaio headlines, so piss poor is the publication in question, they give said Politburo propaganda away gratis. And somehow after reading it, you still feel fucking ripped off. To call the New Times a rag is an insult to cum wipes the world over. Point being, they've had about 80 axes to grind with Arpaio ever since he opened an investigation into their Backpage.com business partners and unwittingly uncovered that the Phoenix New Times were funding and abetting an underage human trafficking ring, pleading the fifth during a federal inquest back in January, culminating in the dramatic but profoundly underreported, imagine that, arrest of the Phoenix New Times founders the following May. And the investigation's not even goddamn over yet, folks. The anti-Arpaio narrative emanating chiefly from this lone publication is a veritable honeycomb of conflicts of interest. So I'll say this, unequivocally and fuck the consequences. This stupid ass Salem witch burning wasn't about brown people or illegal detainment, neither of which the ACLU successfully proved in the bias concentrate that comprised that courtroom, because when push came to shove, illegal detainments violating the constitution, those are felonies and federal ones at that. And he was rather tellingly never convicted of them. That's right, folks. After seven years pissing our pesos away to the tune of hundreds of millions of freshly minted, increasingly devalued dollars, they settled for this weak-ass wankfest, meaning the confirmedly corrupt Obama Justice Department reprinted the ACLU's scathing invective as if wrote, excoriating the Maricopa County Sheriff's Department for illegal detainments and racial profiling, and yet with the best legal minds on the left, the unbridled monetary might of the ACLU's money machine at their back, and no pesky peckerheads in a fucking jury to override them, all they could prove was a misdemeanor. Contempt of fucking court. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If holding G. Maurice Snow's sanctimonious circle jerk of a kangaroo court and abject contempt is a crime, better slap me and the vast majority of my fellow Arizonans in irons right the fuck along with him. I'm incapable of expressing anything but contempt for that laughable legal proceeding. Fuck you, G. Maurice Snow. I hope you lose your bench over this bullshit. Oh, but Razor, what was the violation they did prove, you ask? Well, brace for this, folks. On paper... Profiling. In practice, <clears throat> the only functional example of it that they could actually prove in a court of law... You know those job applications aspiring deputies and really anyone the fuck else seeking gainful employment or compelled to complete? Yeah. It had a race category to fill out. An optional fucking race category. That's what was proven in court. Not illegal detainments. That's a felony. He'd be in federal pound me in the ass prison if that had been established as factual. Not racial profiling. See above. He'd be pothering away in the pokey as we speak. Nope. 
a race question on an application makes him a Hitler. Well, Your Honor, I hope you're planning a ramrod Ronald McDonald right the fuck after, because any application you fill the fuck out these days has that fucking question. Christ's sake, I can't withdraw a dollar amount from an AT fucking M without first establishing my ethnicity and the names of five of my immediate cousins. But our bio is discriminatory over optionally inquiring as to your ancestry. Fuck this farce, and anyone at all who defends it. Am I happy about the pardon? No, because none of this should have fucking happened. Because this country should have been smart enough not to elect a suntan Alfred E. Newman-looking knob who used the Department of Justice as a motherfucking marital aid. Nancy Pelosi was right about one thing. Elections do have consequences. Millions and millions and millions of dollars in consequences. And millions more to come if that Pez dispenser in a police uniform, Penzone, isn't recalled fucking yesterday. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. Amigo.